Welcome to part one of this four part Blender tutorial series on how to create this stylized tune shader T scene in Blender. So this entire tutorial series will be completely free on my YouTube channel and we're going to be using Blender Eevee to create this. So in part one we're going to be modeling the teacup and the liquid in the tea and also the tabletop. Then in part two we'll be modeling the tea kettle and we'll be modeling the spoon and we'll also be modeling the cloth napkin. Then in part 3 we're going to be adding in the HDRI in the scene for the lighting. We'll also be adding a sunlight to light the scene. And then we're going to be creating the Toon Shader stylized materials. And these objects are also going to have a cool outline to make it look like it has kind of a hand drawn effect by having that black outline around the object. Then in part 4 we will finish up the scene, so we're going to be adding these cool stylized bubbles to the tea. We'll also be adding the steam which is coming up from the tea. And we'll be adding this cool window object here which will add a shadow to make it look like morning sunlight is shining into the scene. So this tutorial series will be completely free here on my YouTube channel. And if you'd like to help support me and this channel to help make these free videos possible, then a great way to do that is by checking out my Gumroad store and Patreon page, where you can get 3D models and assets, tutorial files, artwork project files, procedural materials, geometry node modifier setups, and lots more Blender content. And you can also purchase the finished project files of this tutorial if you'd like to, and you can use that for your projects or to use as study material to see how I created this finished 3D scene. Now if you enjoy creating this type of cartoon stylized 3D art and you want to learn how to create more of this type of art, then I can highly recommend checking out CG Boost's course Magic Storybook. So I've reviewed the course myself and it's a very high quality detailed course. So the course covers a workflow combining 3D and 2D and using the grease pencil to create cool stylized artworks. The course is split into many short videos so it's easy to follow along in your own time. And it covers all the basics of grease pencil like how to change the colors, how to draw with grease pencil, and how to use layers. The course also covers how to give a line art style to your 3D models. And you'll also learn step by step how to create this cool fantasy village. It also covers some basic grease pencil rigging and animation. And the course also goes over some really cool methods for creating tune style lighting similar to what we'll be creating in this tutorial. And then the later part of the course shows how to create this cool alchemy lab 3D scene. If you'd like to learn more about the course then you can check out the course with my affiliate links in the description. And if you purchase the course through my affiliate links then I'll earn a small commission so that's also a great way to help support this channel. Now I will be using a few different free resources online to create this artwork and all of the resource links will be in the description. So here on Pixabay I'm going to be downloading this free smoke image and we'll be using this to create the steam in the 3D scene. And then here on Ambient CG I'll be downloading this Fabric 066 and you can just download the 2K JPEG version and we're going to be using the color map and we're going to be adding this to the cloth napkins. And then to get some nice lighting in the 3D scene I'll be downloading this bathroom HDRI from Polyhaven. And you can just download the 1K version and then also download the HDR version and just download this. Alright, so here I am in a new scene in Blender and my screencast keys will be right down here in the corner so that you can see what buttons I'm pressing. So I'll just start by selecting everything, we'll just delete everything, and we're going to start by modeling the teacup. So I'll go to the add menu, let's go to mesh, and I can add a circle. And I'll zoom into the circle, and before I click away or move the circle around, I want to click right above me here on the add circle settings. And I want to turn up the vertices, and I'm going to turn up the vertices to 39, and then I'll close the add circle settings. Now why I'm doing that is because if I press 7 on the numpad for top view and zoom in here, you can see because I added 39 cuts, there's going to be one face here which is nice and flat on the front. So I'll now go into edit mode and we can start to model the cup. So I'm going to press 1 on the numpad to go to front view and I'll just extrude this down with the E key and bring it down on the Z axis. I'll just bring it down to about that far and then I want to extrude this down but I want to make this a bit thinner because this is where I'm going to be extruding out the cup handle. Then I'll extrude this down again and we'll start to scale it down a little bit and extrude it down again, scale it down just a little bit, and extrude that down again. And then right here, this one, I also want to make this one kind of a smaller one. So the teacup handle is going to be extruded out here, and then we'll merge it into the T right there. And we'll extrude this down again and make it really small. All right, something like that. And I'll zoom in here. And then I can extrude this again. And we're going to bring this straight down. So this is going to be the bottom part of the teacup. Then I'll press the F key to fill a face there. 
And then if it's not perfectly round, you can select everything and you can scale it down a bit on the Z axis, maybe bring it up a little bit, just kind of fit it to the shape that you want. You can also go into wireframe and deselect everything and click and drag to use the box select. You can kind of scale things and move them. You could also maybe hold down the alt key and select that loop there. Press control B to add a bevel just to smooth it out a little bit if you don't like exactly how the shape is. So I just want to make it a pretty smooth cut. Let's save this project. So I'll click on file and save as, and I'll just rename it to t.blend. I'll click on save as, and then as you're working on the project, just press control S to save the project. So I now want to extrude out the handle, so I'll hit the one on the numpad to go to front view and I'll zoom in here and I'll click right here to go to the face select and I can just select this face. So you can see because we added that right amount of vertices, this face right here is going to be flat to the front. So I'll now press three on the numpad to go to side view and I'll hit E to extrude and then R to rotate and G to grab and just do some basic modeling. So I'll extrude this out again and rotate it and extrude out again and rotate it. And we're just going to do some simple modeling, just modeling that T handle, extrude this out, bring that down and extrude this out. All right, like that and extrude this out here. And we're going to have this go down and connect right there. I also want to start to scale it down just a little bit, not too much, but it should be a little bit smaller. So scale that down and bring that over there. All right, just like that. And then we want to merge these together. So you can see that this has become a little bit smaller here. So what I'm going to do is select this face here and I'll scale it on the X axis and make it a bit longer. And then I can hit X and we're going to delete this face and then click on this face, hit X and delete that face. And we now want to fill these faces so I can go to the vertex select and I'm just going to select these two vertices, press the F key to fill a face or an edge there, and then hold down the shift key, select these two and press the F key to fill a face there. And now if we just select both of these vertices, we can press the F key and it's automatically going to fill a face and just continue to fill that all the way around, just like that. So I'll now go to side view and I'm going to go back into wireframe and I'll deselect everything. And if you need to change the shape of it a little bit, you can adjust it now. So just kind of adjust the shape of it if you don't like exactly how the shape is. Maybe select the entire thing and scale it up on the Z axis a little bit. That's a bit better. And I can also bring the entire thing up on the Z axis in edit mode just like that. So the origin point is on the very bottom there, All right? That's looking pretty good. So I'll go back into edit mode. I'll hold down the alt key and select that loop of vases there. And I want to inset it and extrude it down to add some thickness. So I'll extrude it and then I will scale it and we'll scale it in just like that. We'll press three on the numpad to go to side view. Let's hold down the Z button and go to wireframe. And I'll just extrude this down here and just extrude it and start to scale it in. And we're just going to make kind of an even amount of thickness inside the teacup. So extrude that down again, scale that down. Just continue to do that all the way inside and it really doesn't matter inside in the center here how it looks because you're not going to be able to see inside of it just something like that and then I can press the F key to fill a face there let's go back to object mode and I will press Control 2 to add a subdivision surface with two levels and we'll use the object context menu to shade it smooth so now what I want to do is add some loop cuts to kind of sharpen up some of the edges so I can go back into edit mode and we can add loop cuts but we can also add some bevels so I'll hold down the alt key select that loop of vertices there and I can press control B to add a bevel and I'll scroll my mouse wheel until there are just two cuts place that there and then hold down the alt key select the loop inside control B to add a bevel and just make that a little bit bigger like that to kind of sharpen up those edges right down here I can click here to go to the face select I'll select this face and I'll hit I to inset that face just inset it a couple of times I can also press control R to add a loop cut and I'll click to add a loop cut there and then just kind of drag up stick it right there control R to add another loop cut let's just drag this down there all right, that's pretty good. I also want to sharpen up the handle. So I'll press control R to add a loop cut. I can scroll out my mouse wheel until there are two loop cuts and I can left click and then right click so they stay in the center. And then I can scale them up on the X axis to kind of sharpen up those edges there, just like that. So I've sharpened up the handle. However, if you go right down here, you can see there's a bit of stretching and there's a sharp part here. So I'm going to go back into edit mode and I'll go to the vertex select and I'm going to hold down the Z button and go to wireframe and I'll press B for the box select and I'll click and drag with my middle mouse wheel and then let go to deselect some of the vertices. Do it again, so hit B for the box select. Click and drag with my middle mouse wheel to deselect some of the vertices. And I'm gonna deselect all the vertices except just the ones on the inside right there and also these ones right here. So you can now see that we just have those selected but we don't have any of the ones on the handle selected. So I can now just scale these in on the Z axis and just scale them in like that pretty close. Go back to object mode and that smoothing does look a lot better now. Now let's go back into edit mode and I also want to add a loop cut here to kind of sharpen this up. So I'll press Control R to add a loop cut. 
click and drag this forward and just place that about there. And we'll also press Control R to add another loop cut. Click here and drag this up here to sharpen that up a little bit. Now you can see the same things happening where it's a bit sharper here. So I can hit B for the box select. I can click and drag with my middle mouse wheel and let go to deselect those vertices. And I'll double tap the G key and just kind of bring them down like that into the center. And then maybe bring the entire thing down slightly on the Z axis. So that does look a bit nicer now. So let's go back to object mode and I will press Control S to save this again and let's now add the liquid T so I'll go to the add menu let's just go here and add a circle and I can bring it up on the z-axis and then go into edit mode and I'll press the F key to fill a face right there just to fill it and I'll scale the entire thing down a little bit so it's a bit smaller and then if I go back to object mode I can bring the entire thing down on the z-axis a little bit so it's not too high so just something like that let's now create the T saucer so I will press shift C just to to center the 3D cursor and I'll go to the add menu and we're going to add another circle and I'll go into edit mode and I'll scale the circle up a bit. If I go to top view, I want to scale this up so that it's almost as big as the handle, but not quite. So just something like that. And I'll press three on the numpad to go to side view. And I'm just gonna bring this up on the Z axis a little bit. And then I'll hit E to extrude and then S to scale, bring that in. And I can bring it down on the Z axis a bit and then extrude it and scale it again. Bring it down on the Z axis a bit, extrude it and scale it again and bring it down on the Z axis a little bit. So it's just gonna be kind of smoothly going down and in. We'll extrude it again and scale it down and then extrude the entire thing down on the Z axis, kind of like that. And then bring that down and then just press the F key to fill the faces there. I might also hold down the Alt key, select that loop of vertices there, and press Control B to add a bevel, just so it's a little bit more smooth. Let's use the object context menu and shade it smooth. And then if you wanna go into edit mode, you can select the entire mesh, and you could scale it up on the Z axis if you want to be more curved or less curved. So I think I'll scale it up a little bit so it's a little bit more curved. Let's go back to object mode, and I wanna bring the saucer up so that the T is kind of fitting into that little spot there so it's just sitting nicely in the saucer. So let's now press Control 2 to add a subdivision surface with two levels. And then I also wanna add a solidify to thicken it. So we'll click on add modifier. We can search for the solidify modifier, just add the solidify. And then I can just turn up the thickness here just to make it a little bit thicker, so something like that. And now that it's thicker, I might wanna bring the entire object down a little bit. And then I wanna add some loop cuts to sharpen up the edges. So I'll go into edit mode. Let's go right down here. I'll press Control R to add a loop cut and I can drag the loop cut pretty close just to kind of sharpen that. And then also down here, Control R to add another loop cut. Let's drag this here and add another loop cut here. And we can add another loop cut right here and drag that in. And then we can go to the face select. We can select the face and I'll hit the I key to inset that face there again, just to sharpen up those edges. All right, that is looking good. Let's save this again with Control S. So now let's just add a table. So I'll just press Shift C again to center the 3D cursor and I'll go to the add menu and I'm just gonna add a plane and I'll just scale this plane up really big, make it even bigger, something like that. And also if I press seven on the numpad for top view, I can bring the plane back a bit so that more of it is gonna show in the background. And also now that we scaled this up really big, I'll press Control A and I'm going to apply the object scale. So that's the new default size of the object. All right, and then right here at the very end, just one more thing that I wanna do. If I go into edit mode of this teacup, I wanna zoom in here and I just forgot to add a loop cut right here. So I'll just press Control R to add a loop cut, bring that in right there just to kind of sharpen that up. So let's press Control S to save the project and this will finish it up for part one of this tutorial. So thank you so much for watching this tutorial series and I hope you're enjoying it so far. And if you'd like to help support the channel to help me keep on creating these free tutorials, then a great way to do that is by checking out my Gumroad store and Patreon page. And on my Gumroad and Patreon page, as well as getting the finished project files of this tutorial, you can also get 3D models and assets and other tutorial files and artwork project files and procedural materials, geometry node modifier setups and lots more blender content on my gumroad store and patreon page so when part two is released it's going to be right up there on the end screen and also the link will be in the video description and as i mentioned at the beginning of the video if you enjoy creating these toon shader stylized 3d artworks and you want to learn how to create more of this type of artwork then i highly recommend checking out the magic storybook course by cg boost and you can find my affiliate link to that course in the description and that's a really high quality course and i can highly recommend it but thank you for watching and I will see you in the next part.